Welcome back. This is the East African Morning. Now, KwaZulu Natal Premier elect Nomosa Dube Ngube is promising to prioritize jobs within the province. Dube Ngube is currently the MEC of Finance in the province. She's said to become the first women premier. But for more analysis of her rise, we're now joined by political analyst Kanye Magubani. Kanye, thank you for your time. Always a pleasure talking to you. So thank you so much. Uh, and happy women's, happy women's Day to you. Uh, let's talk about uh, the premier elect of KwaZulu Natal. Uh, uh, of course, and also her profile. What, what do we know about her and what she's accomplished so far to getting her to this point? A very good morning to you, Demelo, and indeed a happy Women's Day to you. And I couldn't think of a better day for us to be having this particular discussion. Numuza Dubengube has been in, in different spheres of government for a very long time. She is a former diplomat. She was the South African ambassador to the Czech Republic. She's been a mayor before in KZN, in the Durban North Council, before a number of smaller municipalities were amalgamated to form the Eteguini uh, District Municipality. We know that currently she is the finance MEC, and she's also served in a number of portfolios within the KZN legislature. She was a chief whip at some point uh, representing the ANC, and she's also headed up a number of portfolios within the provincial a legislature. So she's a seasoned um, public servant and politician. And with her current position of finance MEC, one can only hope and pray that she will be more prudent with spending and will keep a close and keen eye on how the province's finances have been spent so far, you know, in terms of accountability, but also how they will be spent going into the future. So what we are seeing is a, a, a new day emerging in KZN with the provincial leadership sending a sign that for them, women leadership is not just a talk shop or, you know, women are not there to fill additional seats or deputizing, that they are starting to have the confidence in women to take the very top seats. So we, we are looking forward to, to seeing what Nomusa will bring with her. She seems to have the greater support of people in the province, despite or in spite of political differences. People are generally excited to have a female premier. Mm. And for me, it's not about gender per se, but it's about ability to lead. Uh, however, gender is important because representation remains important in, in the same way that race representation is, report, is important. Yeah. Gender representation is important as well. But if we look at uh, Nomusa's appointment within the broader scope of women in politics in general, we know that uh, prior to 1994, the representation of women in parliament was sitting at 2.7%, and now it's sitting roughly at about 41%. So we have seen strides being made to, to include women, to have greater inclusivity of women in politics. Uh, however, the, the numbers remain Remain slow, and what's also been worrying is that the numbers have slowed down significantly mm. of women mm. continuing to. So we also need to look at that, and hopefully, the appointment of Nobusa Dubengube will encourage more women to get into politics as well. Absolutely, can you? What work do you think lies ahead uh, for Nobusa within the province at this point? Well, for starters, I think she still needs to continue with the cleanup efforts post the KZN floods. We've seen just this week that a number of uh, affected families who were housed in some public halls have been kicked out and have been left destitute. And there is a major infrastructure um, project, you know, that needs to, to be, you know, implemented in KZN because the floods destroyed a lot of roads, a lot of homes, and also destroyed a lot of people people's ability to earn an income. So I think that's the first thing, you know, Nomusa needs to look at stabilizing the province from an infrastructure and housing point of view and also uh, restoring the dignity of those who are affected by the floods. I think from a social cohesion point of view, that's the most important thing. When it comes to the actual governance of the province, Nomusa needs to deal with issues of corruption. I know that the former uh, chairperson of the ANC, Sikhe Zikalala, had said that the ANC has not lost numbers because of corruption, but I disagreed with him. The corruption is very much at the center, you know, of, of, the, of the displeasement that people have. You know, the reason 
reason why people are stopping to vote for the ANC or are losing hope mm -hmm. in the leadership of the ANC because for the most part they've been viewed as poor custodians of the public purse and as a finance MEC uh, it is my hope that she will become more strict you know and she will implement stricter measures and policies in terms of contract awarding and that she will actually turn things around especially in municipalities that have failed to get clean audits in municipalities that have failed to use their budgets effectively and I think that if she can get that right Mm. We can see a lot of development continuing in the province because the finance MEC portfolio in itself is a very big portfolio and a very serious one. And if she can use that as a springboard into her leadership as a premier, then I think that the KZN government actually will stand a good chance of being in a better place in 2024 when she leaves the position. Yeah. And also, I mean, we know the ANC has just come out of a policy conference recently, and I just wonder how significant her voice is within the ANC. Uh, in KZN because I mean when she accepted uh, this uh, you know uh, uh, candidacy she had given homage and paid homage uh, to the likes of Victoria Mwaenge, Dorothy Nyembe, Winnie Madikzela Mandela uh, within the ANC saying these are women that have paved the way and surely uh, she believes they are proud and excited and happy and ululating uh, where they are uh, for her appointment. So how significant then is her voice as a woman within political structures influencing policy uh, a big you know topic around gender equality around gender-based violence within the ANC with chemical castration being uh, top in as far as, you know, a recommendation from uh, the ANC, uh, at least from policy conference is concerned. So how then is she, will she position herself and her voice uh, to be heard? You know, Jamila, it's my hope and desire that Nomusa will, will not just be a what I can say, a sand girl, like do this, do that, somebody who's just there as a lackey, but she will actually stand on her own two feet and not be afraid to disagree with uh, the, the broader movement. One of my biggest gripes with the ANC Women's League is that they have always allowed themselves to be overtaken by the politics of the main movement and they find themselves in positions where they are almost instructed which direction to vote in, which policies to accept. And Uno Musa, really, I hope she will learn from the very woman she's quoted that a woman's journey in politics is never easy because mm -hmm. you don't only fight uh, gender segregation outside the movement, but very much within the movement as well. Sexism and misogyny and gender disparity still exist. And those notions of women belonging in the kitchen and not in politics are still active and they still exist. And it is my hope and desire that she will stand and not be a woman politician that is just told what to do, but that she will have her own stamp and her own identity, that mm -hmm. she will not be afraid to be controversial and strong within uh, the movement. You take a leader like Winnie Matigizela Mandela. She suffered isolation at the hands of her comrades for many years. She was berated by her own comrades for many years. Uh, Victoria Mkwange, all the women that she lists, they suffered greatly at the hands of comrades mm. within the movement, not just in the hands of the political system, but within the movement. Women uh, cadres in exile were getting raped, were getting abused. And those are stories that even the women ministers today who are in cabinet right. refuse to speak about the depth and level of trauma that they still have. Oh, we'll leave it there. I appreciate you speaking to us about this. And of course, it can be uh, only a hope uh, that her journey in these uh, does take a, a positive turn. We'll be, of course, watching it. I know you and I, and we'll be back to talk about it uh, again, uh, should there be any other developments. Kanyima Gubani, thank you so much for talking to us uh, about this this morning.